is perfect because Paul writes this letter to the Galatians right after his first missionary journey. Which means, and, and, and he ended with just kind of this, this statement of, look, you guys are on this first missionary journey. What this thing was about was about strengthening disciples, appointing leaders, and encouraging um, those new believers to remain true to the faith. To remain true to the faith. And he does that. He gets back to his place in Antioch. Galatia is, is right there. And, and he gets word that they have abandoned this gospel. That he just so fearlessly communicated at such a great cost to himself. And, and it's being abandoned. And he's like, no. He's like, before I take another missionary journey, let me just let me write this letter to you guys. Because you have to get this right now. And he wants to hear from the Lord and be sent by the Holy Spirit before he went on his next journey. But you have to get this information. Don't abandon the gospel of grace, right? Don't abandon the gospel of Jesus Christ for some other gospel, which isn't even really another gospel because gospel means what? Good news, Good news right? So how come, it, how come the gospel of Jesus Christ is the only gospel that there is? It's the only truth. Right? You may be abandoning the gospel of Jesus Christ for some other gospel, but it's not even really any gospel because it's not good news. Because it's not true. It's false. It's counterfeit. It's temporary. It's limited. It's finite. It's, it's not God. And it's not grace. So it's not good news. It just can't be, especially when it's compared to grace, compared to Jesus. Let me read... Um, out of Galatians 1, you can follow along on your sheet paper if you want to. I'm going to read all the way through, uh, through verse 9. Paul, an apostle, sent not from men, nor by a man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. And all the brothers and sisters with me, to the churches in Galatia, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, uh, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. If you, in your small group, choose to talk about the gospel, there it is. Those are some highlights of it right there. So if you don't understand the gospel, have that be the first thing that you guys talk about um, in your small group today. So verse 6, Paul doesn't mess around. These traditional greetings are are just that. They're like, hey, greetings, grace and peace to you, all this stuff. Now let's get down to business. And some of that, Paul kind of eases into that. Like, hey, I love you. I'm thanking God for you all the time. There is no cordial remark here outside of the standard greeting. It's, I'm, I am baffled. I am astonished. I don't get it. Why? I'm astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. First of all, Paul doesn't get it because why would you ever turn from a gospel of grace? Why would you ever turn from that? I'll tell you why. And this is speaking to everyone in here, myself included. Because you have a, distor a distorted view of yourself. You think that you are greater than you actually are. Well, I've got news for you. You're not that great. You need grace. People who struggle with grace are people who struggle with pride. And they're people who struggle with the illusion or delusion that they have worth. Because they don't. You don't. And there's freedom in that. What Paul's saying is, look, there's freedom in grace. You don't have to puff up. You don't have to pretend that you're this, that, or the other. That You might have more intellect than this person. You might have more of a physical prowess than this person. You might have a better grasp on social awareness than this person. You might have a better... Uh, uh, okay. Okay. I expect you. You know how that is. why I can do that. But, but hey, but you guys, you guys are not... Though it might be better than who you're comparing yourself to, you need grace. And the kind of grace you need is the kind that lasts forever, and it covers over every single failure. You don't need the kind of grace that's acceptable if you're not too offensive on this side. You don't, you don't need the kind of grace that, that is, uh, that's like, ah, give me, give me the benefit of the doubt, so doubt on this one because you're so great or because you're so talented or because you have plus, whatever plus is. You need the kind of grace that just identifies with who you really are and covers over it anyway. 
that you're a, oh man, I hate, to, I hate to say it, that you're a God hater, that, that you turn your back on him. That, and we do that several times, really a day. But it's okay. Embrace that. Because God says it's okay. Jane. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> All right, hey, but well, we are going to get to this one. It's okay. Sorry. Oh, my gosh. All right, y'all have it here. You can read the rest. But here's what I want you guys to get about grace. Here's what I want you get, to get about grace. And we'll get, oh, I'm so sorry. Hey, I love you guys. And there's grace for me, right? No. No. <laughs> All right. Okay, listen up. I, just, I want you to get, I'm going to give you a secondhand story real quick. I'm going to give you a secondhand story. Um, the, the guy who started DTS, Louis Gray Schaefer, um, was teaching a class, and I'm hearing this secondhand uh, from someone else, but it's a story about him because he teaches on grace. Let me tell you guys what you don't understand about grace. He taught this lesson on grace, and after he did, he taught it with such clarity and such, such accuracy and such uh, a, a way that the, the, his hearers were able to, to resonate I mean, with, with what he was saying that they were floored by it. He left the bench, he stopped talking, and he actually just kind of left the room, hit the lights on his way out, and no student moved out of their chair because they were floored by what they didn't know about grace. Guys, what you have to learn about grace is there's just an ocean of it out there. And I, just, I want you guys to get it just a little bit. And the more that you get grace, the more that you get why God sent his one and only son to die on a cross for you. Why God demonstrates his love for us in this while we were still sinners. God did that. He gave his life. Jesus gave his life. And it's a big deal. And I want you to get that it's a big deal. Not so that you can say, check mark, got it. Or like Kenton got baptized today, which was totally awesome. Not so you can get dunked in water and then go on and forget it. Paul's saying, no, I'm astonished. Don't forget this message of grace. Don't turn from the gospel of grace that's found only in Jesus Christ alone. All right, so you guys have time to talk. I'll leave the rest of this good stuff. Um, okay, I do want to say one more thing, though. Because and this, this just kind of deals with, I, I will get to it. This just kind of deals with, it deals with just kind of church and where we are. I, I want to, uh, to talk to you guys just right where you are when you're in a Christian church. Some of you guys grew up in Christian homes. Some of you guys go to Christian schools. And you have circles of friends that uh, have Christian Bible studies. And you eat Christian food. And you walk by Christian trees. And you drive a Christian car. And you drive your... <laughs> just, look, don't let it... Don't let this message of grace get diluted in all of the Christianese and all the Christian stuff that you're around. And know that spiritual maturity grows through discipline. And that when we, and I say this from a place of, I was accused of being a legalist. And, and, and this church has been accused of being a legalistic church because, and I was like, well, hey, unpack that a little bit more. Tell me a little bit more about my legalism. Like, well, you keep on telling us to go serve. You keep on creating these events that you want us to go to. You keep on doing this thing, and you're, you're, you're challenged. You're telling us to fast. Remember that one Sunday when I brought all the donuts from um, the high school, and I just put them back here, and I'm like, hey, we're going to fast today. And it was just like, right but you're encouraging us to fast. You're encouraging us to pray. You're encouraging us to go to Bible studies. You're encouraging us to preach the gospel. You're encouraging us to go love the unlovable. You're, you're encouraging us to go serve. It's been a Saturday. Why are you so into all these Christian works? And I just took a step back and was like, I had to evaluate, why, why am I? And I took a step forward and I said, look, the reason that we're doing those things is because out of a response to this grace, out of, out of a response to the grace that's in the gospel of Jesus Christ, the grace that we have received if we call ourselves followers of Christ, we do need to respond and, and our response does matter. And in our spiritual maturity and all growing closer to the Lord and closer to each other, I mean, fasting and, and praying and serving and loving, all those things are a part of it. Fearlessly proclaiming, following the Great Commission, that's a part of it. But it's not only there. It's not just in those works. We, we really need to check our motivation. 
on, on why we're doing those things. And if we're not doing them out of a response to the grace of the gospel of Jesus Christ, then we don't need to be doing them. But if we do want to respond to the grace of the gospel of Jesus Christ, then we should do those things out of that motivation. I just don't want that to be confused. Okay, I want to declare that right here so that there's no mistaking it. Now, again, in order to understand that and have the proper motivation, you do need to get grace. And so we're going to break up in small groups today, and we're going to talk about that. And you'll have 25 minutes, not 30. I'm sorry about that. But you will have 25 minutes. Let me pray for us a short, quick prayer. And then uh, we'll get into uh, small groups. God, we love you. We need you. Um, I didn't even touch on the, the people-pleasing aspect. But we know that if we try and please people... We exclude ourselves from unreserved service for Christ. If we're trying to please the world, we exclude ourselves from the kind of reckless abandonment that, that you call for. The world hated, hates us, at, but it hated you first. But we need to take heart because you have overcome the world. We need to be less concerned about what people think and more concerned about responding to this gospel of grace that, that is found in Jesus Christ. And I pray that we can do that as a group. We've got, we have wonderful, awesome leaders um, in, in this body of believers that, uh, that want to give their stories and give their ear and give their heart and give their arms to hug. Um, and, and I just pray for this time in small groups that it's really, it's led by you, um, Holy Spirit of God, and that it, that it is uh, also just kind of ushered in by uh, by these wonderful, awesome leaders that we're privileged to have. And all these, these students that are gathered here today, it's, just, it's not by accident, it's not by coincidence, so they can hear this message, so they can be encouraged by it, that they can be changed by it. Um, and that it will be the motivation that fuels them in everything that they do. Things that are for you, and things that are for school, and things that are for out of obedience to their parents, and things that are for their sport, and things that are, you know, whatever they're doing, that they, that they are changed by this grace. 1 Corinthians 15.10 says that by the grace of you, God, we are who we are. We are sinners. We are worthless. We are lost. We are broken. But you died for us, and we've been saved by your grace. So walk, walk. we are who we are. By grace, we are who we are. And that grace has, has not been without effect. So I just I pray for the effect of that grace, um, and that it shapes everything that we do. For your glory, God, in the name of your Son, Jesus, and by Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Uh,